This video looks at developing a process FMEA using the seven-step approach of the AIAG VDA FMEA Handbook, first edition. Today we're focusing on step five, risk analysis. As in the previous four steps, I really do want to keep you focused as a team on FMEA efficiency. It's important that we get management buy-in and management commitment to developing an FMEA. And we need management to make the investment in doing FMEA correctly. That means uh, putting the time in for a multidisciplinary team, but also that management are committed to taking any improvements needed to reduce risk in the process. But management wants something back from the team. So they want us to identify the risks and then take action that should result in reduced customer complaints, reduced warranty concerns, and reduction in the cost of poor quality. And again, as we've done in the previous steps, just a very quick recap on this seven step approach. The first three steps are about system analysis. I think you'll probably agree with me that this is far more detailed than the AAG fourth edition manual. We then go into failure analysis and risk mitigation. And today we are looking at step five, risk analysis. To try and make this video series practical, we've been working with a case study. Again, very quick recap. This is a GM product. It's an injection molded component with metal pins. It's gonna provide a connection to a GM mating part. It's very similar but you may remember that now we're proposing on using a robot to locate pins into the component. In step two, step three, and step four, the team has got a really good understanding, not just of the proposed process flow, but then hope, honing in on specific steps. We've been focusing on Operation 60, understanding the 4M influence uh, on that process step, Operation 60. And then what we did in step four is we tried to understand the potential failure effects, the failure modes, and the failure causes for each of the process functions. This is gonna provide an input into step five, which is called risk analysis. So step five, risk analysis. What is the purpose? So the purpose of this risk analysis is to estimate the risk by evaluating the severity, the occurrence, and the detection in order to prioritize need for action. So as we've done in the previous steps, let's have a look at the FMEA format and the things that we're gonna to need to complete in filling out the spreadsheet in this step. So first of all, we're gonna to need to think about current prevention controls of the failure cause. And we're also going to need to think about current detection controls for the failure cause or the failure mode. Let's have a look at some examples of prevention control. Maybe we can introduce error proofing, which means the wrong part cannot be inserted. Maybe we're going to put in plans of equipment maintenance or operator-led maintenance, maybe TPM. We can develop work instructions as a prevention control. We can have a first part release process, which can be part of prevention control. And also we can develop detailed machine setting parameters as a prevention control. Bear in mind, these are only examples. So let's go back to the previous step where we identified a potential cause is pins could be dropped by the robot. The team looked at this and said at the moment, because this is a new process, we have no current prevention controls. So that's the team assessment for the particular case study that we've been looking at. So obviously the preference is we're gonna look more at prevention, but we also need to look at detection controls. Examples might be visual inspection, optical inspection with a camera system, doing dimensional checks of the product, 
doing some form of end of line function check. Maybe we're going to use attribute checks, a go, no go gauge, or maybe we're going to use patrol inspection. The team in this case are looking at the cause, the pin dropped by the robot, look back and said, well, what do we currently do for injection molding? And what do we plan to do for this? For similar injection moldings, what we do is we take five molded parts per hour and we visually inspect for missing pins. So for this particular case study, under the prevention control, we would put no prevention control. And under the detection control in the form, we would put that five molded parts per hour are visually inspected by the operator for missing pins. As many of you will be familiar with, one of the things that we have to rate is severity. And in the new handbook, there is a table for severity. Again, similar to the AIAG uh, reference manual, it works on a severity, the highest being a 10, the lowest being a 1. Obviously, you need to look in the FMEA handbook to see the full table. What we see on the screen here is an extract. We need to communicate with the customer on the use of scoring tables, but also on the criteria for designation of special characteristics. Typically, if we're going to identify a severity of a 9 or a 10, that could be designated as either a special product characteristic or a special process characteristic. You will also see by the table that when we look at severity, we look at the impact in your plan, we look at the impact in the ship to plan or customer, and we look at the impact with the end user if known. And these are all very much written around the impact on the vehicle. But they see a column in the right hand side, a blank that can be filled in by the user. So this is where an organization can fill in guidance against the defined scoring criteria. So in the case study, we said an effect could be the part that we're producing, the injection molded component with pins, will not fit into the customer mating part. In this case, what the team would do is look at the severity ranking table, they would have discussion, and the team would come up with an assessment of risk. So in this case, the team came up with a severity score of seven. That either in the plan, a portion of the production may have to be scrapped because we cannot rework. And actually, this could cause a shutdown in the customer plan. So the team have come up with a severity score of seven. Now let's take a look at occurrence. So the occurrence of the failure caused in the process taken into account the prevention control. So remember here we're not looking at detection control, we're looking at the prevention control. Here you see the full table for occurrence in the new AIG FMEA handbook. Also in the manual there are two other occurrence tables. One is very similar to what we would have seen in the AIG 4th edition handbook that looks at incidents per thousand vehicles, but the other table is about time-based prediction. But this is one example that you see on the screen of an occurrence table that is included in the manual. And you'll see a column on here, the type of control. This is different to what we may have seen before, and we'll take a look at this in the next slide. So what do the writers of the handbook mean by behavioral? This is where we're going to rely on people, for example, qualified operators. But we know that that is not really foolproofed. So what we should be doing is thinking about best practice. Can we build error proofing into the process? We need to do error proofing verification. We need to invest in calibration. We need to invest in preventive maintenance. 
But really where we want to drive prevention is that we rely on the equipment and we come up with technical solutions that means that the problems cannot occur. So now let's think about this specific example. So we said there is no prevention control. So in that case, the team have no alternative here but to score a occurrence of a score of 10. Let's look at this risk analysis detection from the case study perspective. Remember we said the detection control is that we take five molded parts per hour and we check them visually for missing pins. In this case, the team looked at the detection ranking system and they came up with a detection score of eight. Okay, so this is where we're doing human inspection yeah, of the product. The team said probably eight is an appropriate score given that detection control. Now let's take a look at detection. So this is a rating associated with a prediction of the most effective detection control. We score this without reference to severity and occurrence. Here again you see an extract of the table. We need to refer to the FMEA handbook to see the full table. So now we've looked already at a ranking of severity, of occurrence and of detection. But unlike the previous manuals, we are not going to be calculating a risk priority number by calculating those three scores together, by multiplying them together. What we're going to be looking at is an action priority ranking. This is new to the AAGVDA handbook and it accounts for all a thousand possible combinations between one and a thousand. And it's been created to give more emphasis on severity first, then occurrence, and then detection. And it works out a ranking, an action priority ranking, that can either come out high, medium, or low. Obviously, the priority should be on any high items that we've identified through the FMEA risk analysis process. What you see on the screen here is an extract from the action priority table. And you will see that we can use this for design FMEA or we can use it for process FMEA. There is not a separate table for each. And what this looks at is a combination of particular ranges of severity. In this case, we see a range of severity from nine to 10. It then looks at ranges of occurrence. It then looks at ranges of detection. And based upon how we've scored severity, occurrence and detection, it gives us an action priority ranking. So relate this to the case study that we've been working on. You may recall that we ranked severity of seven, occurrence of 10, because we had no prevention controls, and detection of eight, because we were only doing visual inspection. So if we look at the action priority table, we see the severity falls somewhere between seven and eight, the occurrence somewhere between eight and 10, and the detection somewhere between seven and 10. And not surprisingly, this comes out as a high action priority. So let's summarize step five risk analysis. So the team now have a really good understanding of the risks within the process step that we're evaluating and using the AP rankings where we really need to focus our improvement actions. This provides an input into step six, which is optimization.